The Sermon of Charles Spurgeon Titled Songs in the Night Text But none saith, Where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? Job 35.10 Elihu was a wise man, exceeding wise, though not as wise as the all-wise Jehovah, who sees light in the clouds, and finds order in confusion, hence Elihu, being much puzzled at beholding Job thus afflicted, cast about him to find the cause of it, and he very wisely hit upon one of the most likely reasons, although it did not happen to be the right one in Job's case. He said within himself surely, if men be tried and troubled exceedingly, it is because, while they think about their troubles and distress themselves about their fears, they do not say, Where is God my Maker? who giveth songs in the night. Elihu's reason was very right in the majority of cases. The great cause of the Christian's distress, the reason of the depths of sorrow into which many believers are plunged, is simply this that while they are looking about, on the right hand and on the left, to see how they may escape their troubles, they forget to look to the hills whence all real help cometh, they do not say, Where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? We shall, however, leave that inquiry, and dwell upon those sweet words, God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night. The world hath its night. It seemeth necessary that it should have one. The sun shineth by day, and men go forth to their labors, but they grow weary, and nightfall cometh on, like a sweet boon from heaven. The darkness draweth the curtains, and shutteth out the light, which might prevent our eyes from slumber, while the sweet, calm stillness of the nights permits us to rest upon the lap of ease, and there forget a while our cares, until the morning sun appeareth, and an angel puts his hand upon the curtain, and undraws it once again, touches our eyelids, and bids us rise, and proceed to the labors of the day. Night is one of the greatest blessings men enjoy, we have many reasons to thank God for it. Yet night is to many a gloomy season. There is the pestilence that walketh in darkness, there is the terror by night, there is the dread of robbers and of fell disease, with all those fears that the timorous know, when they have no light wherewith they can discern objects. It is then they fancy that spiritual creatures walk the earth, though, if they knew rightly, they would find it to be true, that, Millions of spiritual creatures walk this earth unseen, both when we sleep and when we wake, and that at all times they are round about us not more by night than by day. Night is the season of terror and alarm to most men. Yet even night hath its songs. Have you never stood by the seaside at night, and heard the pebbles sing, and the waves chant God's glories? Or have you never risen from your couch, and thrown up the window of your chamber, and listened there? Listen to what? Silence save now and then a murmuring sound, which seems sweet music then. And have you not fancied that you heard the harp of God playing in heaven? Did you not conceive, that yon stars, that those eyes of God, looking down on you, were also mouths of song that every star was singing God's glory, singing, as it shone, its mighty Maker, and His lawful, well-deserved praise. Night hath its songs. We need not much poetry in our spirit, to catch the song of night, and hear the spheres as they chant praises which are loud to the heart, though they be silent to the ear the praises of the mighty God, who bears up the unpillared arch of heaven, and moves the stars in their courses. Man, too, like the great world in which he lives, must have his night. For it is true that man is like the world around him, he is a little world, he resembles the world in almost everything, and if the world has its night, so hath man. And many a night do we have nights of sorrow, nights of persecution, nights of doubt, nights of bewilderment, nights of anxiety, nights of oppression, nights of ignorance, nights of all kinds, which press upon our spirits and terrify our souls. But, blessed be God, 
the Christian man can say, My God giveth me songs in the night. It is not necessary, I take it, to prove to you that Christian men have nights, for if you are Christians, you will find that you have them, and you will not want any proof, for nights will come quite often enough. I will, therefore, proceed at once to the subject, and I will speak this evening upon songs in the night, their source God giveth them, songs in the night, their matter what do we sing about in the night? Songs in the night, their excellence they are hearty songs, and they are sweet ones, songs in the night, their uses their benefits to ourselves and others. First, songs in the night who is the author of them? God, says the text, our maker. He giveth songs in the night. Any man can sing in the day. When the cup is full, man draws inspiration from it, when wealth rolls in abundance around him, any man can sing to the praise of a God who gives a plenteous harvest, or sends home a loaded argosy. It is easy enough for an aeola and harp to whisper music when the winds blow, the difficulty is for music to come when no wind blow it. It is easy to sing when we can read the notes by daylight, but the skillful singer is he who can sing when there is not a ray of light to read by who sings from his heart and not from a book that he can see, because he has no means of reading, save from that inward book of his own living spirit, whence notes of gratitude pour out in songs of praise. No man can make a song in the night himself, he may attempt it, but he will feel how difficult it is. Let all things go as I please I will weave songs, weave them wherever I go, with the flowers that grow upon my path, but put me in a desert, where no flowers are, and wherewith shall I weave a chorus of praise to God? How shall I make a crown for him? Let this voice be free, and this body be full of health, and I can sing God's praise, but stop this tongue, lay me upon the bed of languishing, and it is not so easy to sing from the bed, and chant high praises in the fires. Give me the bliss of spiritual liberty, and let me mount up to my God, get near the throne, and I will sing, I, sing as sweet as seraphs, but confine me, fetter my spirit, clip my wings, make me exceeding sad, so that I become old like the eagle ah. Then it is hard to sing. It is not in man's power to sing, when all is adverse. It is not natural to sing in trouble bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name for that is a daylight song. But it was a divine song which Habakkuk sang, when in the night he said though the fig tree shall not blossom, and so on, yet will I trust in the Lord, and stay myself in the God of Jacob. Methinks in the Red Sea any man could have made a song like that of Moses the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea, the difficulty would have been, to compose a song before the Red Sea had been divided, and to sing it before Pharaoh's hosts had been drowned, while yet the darkness of doubt and fear was resting on Israel's hosts. Songs in the night come only from God, they are not in the power of man. But what does the text mean, when it asserts that God giveth songs in the night? We think we find two answers to the question. The first is, that usually in the night of a Christian's experience God is his only song. If it be daylight in my heart, I can sing songs touching my graces songs touching my sweet experience songs touching my duties songs touching my labors, but let the night come my graces appear to have withered, my evidences, though they are there, are hidden, I cannot. Read my title clear. To mansions in the skies. And now I have nothing left to sing of but my God. It is strange that when God gives his children mercies, they generally set their hearts more on the mercies than on the giver of them, but when the night comes, and he sweeps all the mercies away, then at once they say, Now, my God, I have nothing to sing of but thee, I must come to thee, and to thee only. I had cisterns once, they were full of water, I drank from them then, but now the created streams are dry, sweet Lord, I quaff no stream but thine own self, 
I drink from no fount but from thee. I, child of God, thou knowest what I say, or if thou dost not understand it yet, thou wilt do so by and by. It is in the night we sing of God, and of God alone. Every string is tuned, and ever power hath its attribute to sing, while we praise God, and nothing else. We can sacrifice to ourselves in daylight we only sacrifice to God by night, we can sing high praises to our dear selves when all is joyful, but we cannot sing praise to any save our God, when circumstances are untoward, and providences appear adverse. God alone can furnish us with songs in the night. And yet again, not only does God give the song in the night, because he is the only subject upon which we can sing then, but because he is the only one who inspires songs in the night. Bring me up a poor, melancholy, distressed child of God. I come into the pulpit, I seek to tell him sweet promises, and whisper to him sweet words of comfort, he listeneth not to me, he is like the deaf adder, he listens not to the voice of the charmer, charm he never so wisely. Send him round to all the comforting divines, and all the holy Barnabases that ever preached, and they will do very little they will not be able to squeeze a song out of him, do what they may. He is drinking the gall of wormwood, he says, O Lord, thou hast made me drunk with weeping, I have eaten ashes like bread, and comfort him as you may, it will be only a woeful note or two of mournful resignation that you will get from him. You will get no psalms of praise, no hallelujahs, no sonnets. But let God come to his child in the night, let him whisper in his ear as he lies on his bed, and how you see his eyes flash fire in the night. Do you not hear him say, Tis paradise, if thou art here. If thou depart, tis hell. I could not have cheered him. It is God that has done it and God giveth songs in the night. It is marvelous, brethren, how one sweet word of God will make whole songs for Christians. One word of God is like a piece of gold, and the Christian is the gold beater, and he can hammer that promise out for whole weeks. I can say myself, I have lived on one promise for weeks, and want no other. I want just simply to hammer that promise out into gold leaf, and plate my whole existence with joy from it. The Christian gets his songs from God. God gives him inspiration, and teaches him how to sing. God may make her, who giveth songs in the night. So, then, poor Christian, thou needest not go pumping up thy poor heart to make it glad. Go to thy maker, and ask him to give thee a song in the night. Thou art a poor dry well. Thou hast heard it said, that when a pump is dry, you must pour water down it first of all, and then you will get some up, and so, Christian, when thou art dry, go to God, ask him to pour some joy down thee, and then thou wilt get some joy up from thine own heart. Do not go to this comforter or that, for you will find them jobs comforters, after all, but go thou first and foremost to thy Maker, for he is the great composer of songs and teacher of music, he it is who can teach thee how to sing. God, my Maker, who giveth me songs in the night. Thus we have dwelt upon the first point. Now the second. What is generally the matter contained in a song in the night? What do we sing about? Why, I think, when we sing by night, there are three things we sing about. Either we sing about the yesterday that is over, or else about the night itself, or else about the morrow that is to come. Each of these are sweet themes, when God our Maker gives us songs in the night. In the midst of the night the most usual method for Christians is to sing about the day that is over. Well, they say, it is night now, but I can remember when it was daylight. Neither moon nor stars appear at present but I can remember when I saw the sun. I have no evidence just now, but there was a time when I could say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I have my doubts and fears at this present moment, 
but it is not long since I could say, with full assurance, I know that he shed his blood for me, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and when he shall stand a second time upon the earth, though the worms devour this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. It may be darkness now, but I know the promises were sweet, I know I had blessed seasons in his house. I am quite sure of this, I used to enjoy myself in the ways of the Lord, and though now my paths are strewn with thorns, I know it is the king's highway. It was a way of pleasantness once, it will be a way of pleasantness again. I will remember the days of old, I will meditate upon the years of the right hand of the Most High. Christian, perhaps the best song thou canst sing, to cheer thee in the night, is the song of yester morn. Remember, it was not always night with thee. Night is a new thing to thee. Once thou hadst a glad heart, a buoyant spirit, once thine eye was full of fire, once thy foot was light, once thou couldst sing for very joy and ecstasy of heart. Well, then, remember that God, who made thee sing yesterday, has not left thee in the night. He is not a daylight God, who can not know his children in darkness, but he loves thee now as much as ever. Though he has left thee a little, it is to prove thee, to make thee trust him better, and serve him more. Let me tell you some of the sweet things of which a Christian may make a song when he is in the night. If we are going to sing of the things of yesterday, let us begin with what God did for us in past times. My beloved brethren, you will find it a sweet subject for song at times, to begin to sing of electing love and covenanted mercies. When thou thyself art low, it is well to sing of the fountainhead of mercy, of that blessed decree wherein thou wast ordained to eternal life, and of that glorious man who undertook thy redemption, of that solemn covenant signed, and sealed, and ratified, in all things ordered well, of that everlasting love which, ere the hoary mountains were begotten, or ere the aged hills were children, chose thee, loved thee firmly, loved thee fast, loved thee well, loved thee eternally. I tell thee, believer, if thou canst go back to the years of eternity, if thou canst in thy mind run back to the years of eternity, if thou canst in thy mind run back to that period, or ere the everlasting hills were fashioned, or the fountains of the great deep scooped out, and if thou canst see thy God inscribing thy name in his eternal book, if thou canst read in his loving heart eternal thoughts of love to thee, thou wilt find this a charming means of giving thee songs in the night. No songs like those which come from electing love, no sonnets like those that are dictated by meditations on discriminating mercy. Some, indeed, cannot sing of election. The Lord opened their mouths a little wider. Some there are that are afraid of the very term, but we only despise men who are afraid of what they believe, afraid of what God has taught them in his Bible. No, in our darker hours it is our joy to sing. Sons we are through God's election. Who in Jesus Christ believe. By eternal destination. Sovereign grace we now receive. Lord, thy favor. Shall both grace and glory give. Think, Christian, of the yesterday, I say, and thou wilt get a song in the night. But if thou hast not a voice tuned to so high a key as that, let me suggest some other mercies thou mayest sing of, and they are the mercies thou hast experienced. What? Man, canst thou not sing a little of that blessed hour when Jesus met thee, when, a blind slave, thou wast sporting with death, and he saw thee, and said, Come, poor slave, come with me. Canst thou not sing of that rapturous moment when he snapped thy fetters, dashed thy chains to the earth, and said, I am the breaker, I came to break thy chains, and set thee free. What though thou art ever so gloomy now, canst thou forget that happy morning, when in the house God thy voice was loud, almost as a seraph's voice, in praise. For thou couldst sing. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. 
A monument of grace. A sinner saved by blood. Go back, man, sing of that moment, and then thou wilt have a song in the night. Or if thou hast almost forgotten that, then sure thou hast some precious milestone along the road of life that is not quite grown over with moss, on which thou canst read some happy inscription of his mercy toward thee. What? Didst thou never have a sickness like that which thou art suffering now, and did he not raise thee up from that? Wast thou never poor before, and did he not supply thy wants? Wast thou never in straits before, and did he not deliver thee? Come, man. I beseech thee, go to the river of thine experience, and pull up a few bulrushes, and weave them into an ark, wherein thine infant faith may float safely on the stream. I bid thee not forget what God hath done. What? Hast thou buried thine own diary? I beseech thee, man, turn over the book of thy remembrance. Canst thou not see some sweet hill, Mizar? Canst thou not think of some blessed hour when the Lord met with thee at Hermon? Hast thou never been on the delectable mountains? Hast thou never been fetched from the den of lions? Hast thou never escaped the jaw of the lion and the paw of the bear? Nay, O man, I know thou hast, go back, then, a little way, and take the mercies of yesterday, and though it is dark now, light up the lamps of yesterday, and they shall glitter through the darkness, and thou shalt find that God hath given thee a song in the night. I, says one, but you know, that when we are in the dark, we cannot see the mercies God has given us. It is all very well for you to tell us this, but we cannot get hold of them. I remember an old experimental Christian speaking about the great pillars of our faith. He was a sailor, we were then on board ship, and there were sundry huge posts on the shore, to which the ships were usually fastened, by throwing a cable over them. After I had told him a great many promises, he said, I know they are good strong promises, but I can not get near enough to shore to throw my cable around them, that is the difficulty. Now, it often happens that God's past mercies and loving kindnesses would be good sure posts to hold on to, but we have not got faith enough to throw our cable round them, and so we go slipping down the stream of unbelief, because we cannot stay ourselves by our former mercies. I will, however, give you something that I think you can throw your cable over. If God has never been kind to you, one thing you surely know, and that is, he has been kind to others. Come, now, if thou art in ever so great straits, sure there were others in greater straits. What? Art thou lower down than poor Jonah was, when he went down to the bottoms of the mountains? Art thou more poorly off than thy master, when he had not a place where to lay his head? What? Conceivest thou thyself to be the worst of the worst? Look at Job there scraping himself with a pot's herd, and sitting on a dunghill. Art thou as bad as he? And yet Job rose up, and was richer than before, and out of the depths Jonah came, and preached the word, and our Savior Jesus hath mounted to his throne. O Christian! Only think of what he has done for others. If thou canst not recollect that he has done anything for thee, yet remember, I beseech thee, what his usual rule is, and do not judge hardly by my God. You remember Ben-Hadad, when he was overcome and conquered, and Ahab was after him. Some said to him, We know that the kings of Israel are merciful kings, let us send therefore unto Ahab, and it may be he will spare our lives. Ben-Hadad sent to the king, he had received no kindness from Ahab before, he had only heard that he was a merciful king, so to the king he went, and what said the king? Is my brother, Ben-Hadad, yet alive? Truly, poor soul, if thou hast never had a merciful God, yet others have had, the king is a merciful king, go and try him. If thou art ever so low in thy troubles, look to the hills, 
from whence cometh thy help. Others have had help therefrom, and so mayest thou. Up might start hundreds of God's children, and show us their hands full of comforts and mercies, and they could say, The Lord gave us these without money and without price, and why should he not give to thee also, seeing that thou also art a king's son? Thus, Christian, thou wilt get a song in the night out of other people, if thou canst not get a song from thyself. Never be ashamed of taking a leaf out of another man's experience book. If thou canst find no good leaf in thine own, tear one out of someone's else, and if thou hast no cause to be grateful to God in darkness, or canst not find cause in thine own experience, go to someone else, and, if thou canst, harp his praise in the dark, and like the nightingale sing his praise sweetly when all the world has gone to rest. We can sing in the night of the mercies of yesterday. But I think, beloved, there is never so dark a night, but there is something to sing about, even concerning that night, for there is one thing I am sure we can sing about, let the night be ever so dark, and that is, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, and because his compassions fail not. If we can not sing very loud, yet we can sing a little low tune, something like this he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Oh, says one, I do not know where to get my dinner from tomorrow. I am a poor wretch. So you may be, my dear friend, but you are not so poor as you deserve to be. Do not be mightily offended about that, if you are, you are no child of God, for the child of God acknowledges that he has no right to the least of God's mercies, but that they come through the channel of grace alone. As long as I am out of hell, I have no right to grumble, and if I were in hell I should have no right to complain, for I feel, when convinced of sin, that never creature deserved to go there more than I do. We have no cause to murmur, we can lift up our hands, and say, Night. Thou art dark, but thou mightst have been darker. I am poor, but if I could not have been poorer, I might have been sick. I am poor and sick well, I have some friend left, my lot can not be so bad, but it might have been worse. And therefore, Christian, you will always have one thing to sing about Lord, I thank thee, it is not all darkness. Besides, Christian, However dark the night is, there is always a star or moon. There is scarce ever a night that we have, but there are just one or two little lamps burning up there. However dark it may be, I think you may find some little comfort, some little joy, some little mercy left, and some little promise to cheer thy spirit. The stars are not put out, are they? Nay, if thou canst not see them, they are there but methinks one or two must be shining on thee, therefore give God a song in the night. If thou hast only one star, bless God for that one, perhaps he will make it two, and if thou hast only two stars, bless God twice for the two stars, and perhaps he will make them four. Try, then, if thou canst not find a song in the night. But, beloved, there is another thing of which we can sing yet more sweetly, and that is, we can sing of the day that is to come. I am preaching tonight for the poor weavers of Spitalfields. Perhaps there are not to be found a class of men in London who are suffering a darker night than they are, for while many classes have been befriended and defended, there are few who speak up for them, and, if I am rightly informed, they are generally ground down within an inch of their lives. I suppose their masters intend that their bread shall be very sweet, on the principle, that the nearer the ground, the sweeter the grass, for I should think no people have their grass so near the ground as the weavers of Spitalfields. In an inquiry by the House of Commons last week, it was given in evidence, that their average wages amount to seven or eight shillings a week, and then they have to furnish themselves with a room, and work at expensive articles, which my friends the ladies are wearing now, 
and which they buy as cheaply as possible, but perhaps they do not know that they are made with the blood and bones and marrow of the Spitalfields weavers, who, many of them, work for less than man ought to have to subsist. Upon. Some of them waited upon me the other day, I was exceedingly pleased with one of them. He said, Well, sir, it is very hard, but I hope there is better times coming for us. Well, my friend, I said, I am afraid you can not hope for much better times, unless the Lord Jesus Christ comes a second time. That is just what we hope for, said he. We do not see there is any chance of deliverance, unless the Lord Jesus Christ comes to establish his kingdom upon earth, and then he will judge the oppressed, and break the oppressors in pieces with an iron rod, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. I was glad my friend had got a song in the night, and was singing about the morning that was coming. Often do I cheer myself with the thought of the coming of the Lord. We preach now, perhaps, with little success, the kingdoms of this world are not become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, we send out missionaries, they are for the most part unsuccessful. We are laboring, but we do not see the fruit of our labors. Well, what then? Try a little while, we shall not always labor in vain, or spend our strength for naught. A day is coming, and now is, when every minister of Christ shall speak with unction, when all the servants of God shall preach with power, and when colossal systems of heathenism shall tumble from their pedestals, and mighty, gigantic delusions shall be scattered to the winds. The shout shall be heard, Alleluia! Alleluia! The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. For that day do I look, it is to the bright horizon of that second coming that I turn my eyes. My anxious expectation is, that the sweet sun of righteousness will arise with healing beneath his wings, that the oppressed shall be righted, that despotisms shall be cut down, that liberty shall be established, that peace shall be made lasting, and that the glorious liberty of the gospel of God shall be extended throughout the known world. Christian If thou art in a night, think of the morrow, cheer up thy heart with the thought of the coming of thy Lord. Be patient, for lo! He comes, with clouds descending. Be patient. The husbandman waits until he reaps his harvest. Be patent, for you know who has said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to every man according as his works shall be. One thought more upon that point. There is another sweet tomorrow of which we hope to sing in the night. Soon, beloved, you and I shall lie on our dying bed, and we shall want a song in the night then, and I do not know where we shall get it, if we do not get it from the tomorrow. Kneeling by the bed of an apparently dying saint, last night, I said, Well, sister, he has been precious to you, you can rejoice in his covenant mercies, and his past loving kindnesses. She put out her hand, and said, Ah, sir, do not talk about them now, I want the sinner's savior as much now as ever, it is not a saint's savior I want, it is still a sinner's savior that I am in need of, for I am a sinner still. I found that I could not comfort her with the past, so I reminded her of the golden streets, of the gates of pearl, of the walls of jasper, of the harps of gold, of the songs of bliss, and then her eye glistened, she said, yes, I shall be there soon, I shall meet them by and by, and then she seemed so glad. Ah. Believer, you may always cheer yourself with that thought, for if you are ever so low now, remember that. A few more rolling suns, at most, will land thee on fair Canaan's coast. Thy head may be crowned with thorny troubles now, but it shall wear a starry crown directly, thy hand may be filled with cares it shall grasp a harp soon, a harp full of music. Thy garments may be soiled with dust now, they shall be white by and by. Wait a little longer. Ah! 
Beloved, how despicable our troubles and trials will seem when we look back upon them. Looking at them here in the prospect, they seem immense, but when we get to heaven, we shall then, with transporting joys, recount the labors of our feet. Our trials will seem to us nothing at all. We shall talk to one another about them in heaven, and find all the more to converse about, according as we have suffered more here below. Let us go on, therefore, and if the night be ever so dark, remember there is not a night that shall not have a morning, and that morning is to come by and by. When sinners are lost in darkness, we shall lift up our eyes in everlasting light. Surely I need not dwell longer on this thought. There is matter enough for songs in the night in the past, the present, and the future. And now I want to tell you, very briefly, what are the excellences of songs in the night above all other songs. In the first place, when you hear a man singing a song in the night I mean in the night of trouble you may be quite sure it is a hearty one. Many of you sang very prettily just now, didn't you? I wonder whether you would sing very prettily, if there were a stake or two in Smithfield for all of you who dared to do it. If you sang under pain and penalty, that would show your heart to be in your song. We can all sing very nicely indeed when everybody else sings. It is the easiest thing in the world to open your mouth, and let the words come out, but when the devil puts his hand over your mouth, can you sing then? Can you say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him? That is hearty singing. That is real song that springs up in the night. The nightingale singeth most sweetly because she singeth in the night. We know a poet has said, that if she snag by day, she might be thought to sing no more sweetly than the wren. It is the stillness of the night that makes her song sweet. And so doth a Christian song become sweet and hearty, because it is in the night. Again, the songs we sing in the night will be lasting. Many songs we hear our fellow creatures singing in the streets will not do to sing by and by, I guess they will sing a different kind of tune soon. They can sing nowadays any rollicking, drinking songs, but they will not sing them when they come to die, they are not exactly the songs with which to cross Jordan's billows. It will not do to sing one of those light songs when death and you are having the last tug. It will not do to enter heaven singing one of those unchanged est, unholy sonnets. No, but the Christian who can sing in the night will not have to leave off his song, he may keep on singing it forever. He may put his foot in Jordan's stream, and continue his melody, he may wade through it, and keep on singing still, and land himself safe in heaven, and when he is there, there need not be a gap in his strain, but in a nobler, sweeter strain, he may still continue singing his power to save. There are a great many of you that think Christian people are a very miserable set, don't you? You say, let me sing my song. I, but, my dear friends, we like to sing a song that will last, we don't like your songs, they are all froth, like bubbles on the breaker, and they will soon die away and be lost. Give me a song that will last, give me one that will not melt. Oh, give me not the dreamster's gold. He hoards it up, and says, I'm rich, and when he wakes, his gold is gone. But give me songs in the night, for they are songs I sing forever. Again, the songs we warble in the night are those that show we have real faith in God. Many men have just enough faith to trust God as far as they can see Him, and they always sing as far as they can see providence go right. But true faith can sing when its possessors cannot see. It can take hold of God when they cannot discern Him. Songs in the night, too, prove that we have true courage. Many sing by day who are silent by night, they are afraid of thieves and robbers, but the Christian who sings in the night proves himself to be a courageous character. It is the bold Christian who can sing God's sonnets in the darkness. He who can sing songs in the night, too, 
proves that he has true love to Christ. It is not love to Christ to praise him while everybody else praises him, to walk arm in arm with him when he has the crown on his head is no great deed, I what, to walk with Christ in rags is something. To believe in Christ when he is shrouded in darkness, to stick hard and fast by the Savior when all men speak ill of him and forsake him that is true faith. He who singeth a song to Christ in the night, singeth the best song in all the world, for he singeth from the heart. I am afraid of wearying you, therefore I will not dwell on the excellences of night songs, but just, in the last place, show you their use. Well, beloved, it is very useful to sing in the night of our troubles, first, because it will cheer ourselves. When you were boys living in the country, and had some distance to go alone at night, don't you remember how you whistled and sang to keep your courage up? Well, what we do in the natural world we ought to do in the spiritual. There is nothing like singing to keep your spirits alive. When we have been in trouble, we have often thought ourselves to be well nigh overwhelmed with difficulty, and we have said, let us have a song. We have begun to sing, and Martin Luther says, the devil cannot bear singing. That is about the truth, he does not like music. It was so in Saul's days. An evil spirit rested on Saul, but when David played on his harp, the evil spirit went away from him. This is usually the case. If we can begin to sing we shall remove our fears. I like to hear servants sometimes humming a tune at their work, I love to hear a plowman in the county singing as he goes along with his horses. Why not? You say he has no time to praise God, but he can sing a song surely he can sing a psalm, it will take no more time. Singing is the best thing to purge ourselves of evil thoughts. Keep your mouth full of songs, and you will often keep your heart full of praises, keep on singing as long as you can, you will find it a good method of driving away your fears. Sing in trouble, again, because God loves to hear his people sing in the night. At no time does God love his children singing so well as when they give a serenade of praise under his window, when he has hidden his face from them, and will not appear to them at all. They are all in darkness, but they come under his window, and they begin to sing there. Ah, says God, that is true faith, that can make them sing praises when I will not look at them, I know there is some faith in them, that makes them lift up their hearts, even when I seem to take away all my tender mercies and all my compassions. Sing, Christian, for singing pleases God. In heaven, we read, the angels are employed in singing. Do you be employed in the same way, for by no better means can you gratify the Almighty One of Israel, who stoops from his high throne to observe the poor creature of a day. Sing, again, for another reason. Because it will cheer your companions. If any of them are in the valley and in the darkness with you, it will be a great help to comfort them. John Bunyan tells us, that as Christian was going through the valley he found it a dreadful dark place, and terrible demons and goblins were all about him, and poor Christian thought he must perish for certain, but just when his doubts were the strongest, he heard a sweet voice, he listened to it, and he heard a man in front of him saying, Yeah, when I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, that man did not know who was near him, but he was unwittingly singing to cheer a man behind. Christian, when you are in trouble, sing, you do not know who is near you. Sing. Perhaps you will get a good companion by it. Sing. Perhaps there will be many a heart cheered by your song. There is some broken spirit, it may be, that will be bound up by your sonnets. Sing. There is some poor distressed brother, perhaps, shut up in the castle of despair, who, like King Richard, will hear your song inside the walls, and sing to you again, and you may be the means of getting him a ransom. Sing, 
Christian, wherever you go, try, if you can, to wash your face every morning in a bath of praise. When you go down from your chamber, never go to look on man till you have first looked on your God, and when you have looked on him, seek to come down with a face beaming with joy, carry a smile, for you will cheer up many a poor wayworn pilgrim by it. And when thou fastest, Christian when thou hast an aching heart, do not appear to men to fast, appear cheerful and happy, anoint thy head, and wash thy face. Be happy for thy brother's sake, it will tend to cheer him up, and help him through the valley. One more reason, and I know it will be a good one for you. Try and sing in the night, Christian, for that is one of the best arguments in all the world in favor of your religion. Our divines, nowadays, spend a great deal of time in trying to prove Christianity against those who disbelieve it. I should like to have seen Paul trying that. Elimus the sorcerer withstood him. How did our friend Paul treat him? He said, Oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? That is about the politeness such men ought to have who deny God's truth. We start with this assumption. We will prove that the Bible is God's word, but we are not going to prove God's word. If you do not like to believe it, we will shake hands, and bid you goodbye, we will not argue with you. The gospel has gained little by discussion. The greatest piece of folly on earth has been to send a man round the country, to follow another up who has been lecturing on infidelity just to make himself notorious. Why, let them lecture on, this is a free country, why should we follow them about? The truth will win the day. Christianity need not wish for controversy, it is strong enough for it, if it wishes it, but that is not God's way. God's direction is, preach, teach, dogmatize. Do not stand disputing, claim a divine mission, tell men that God says it, and there leave it. Say to them, he that believeth shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned, and when you have done that, you have done enough. For what reason should our missionaries stand disputing with Brahmins? Why should they be wasting their time by attempting to refute first this dogma, and then another, of heathenism? Why not just go and say, The God whom ye ignorantly worship, I declare unto you, Believe me, and you will be saved believe me not, and the Bible says you are lost. And then, having thus asserted God's word, say, I leave it, I declare it unto you, it is a thing for you to believe, not a thing for you to reason about. Religion is not a thing merely for your intellect, a thing to prove your own talent upon, by making a syllogism on it, it is a thing that demands your faith. As a messenger of heaven, I demand that faith, if you do not choose to give it, on your own head be the doom, if there be such, if there be not, you are prepared to risk it. But I have done my duty, I have told you the truth, that is enough, and there I leave it. Oh, Christian, instead of disputing, let me tell thee how to prove your religion. Live it out. Live it out. Give the external as well as the internal evidence, give the external evidence of your own life. You are sick, there is your neighbor, who laughs at religion, let him come into your house. When he was sick, he said, oh, send for the doctor, and there he was fretting, and fuming, and whining, and making all manner of noises. When you are sick, send for him, tell him that you are resigned to the Lord's will that you will kiss the chastening rod, that you will take the cup, and drink it, because your father gives it. You need not make a boast of this, or it will lose all its power, but do it because you can not help doing it. Your neighbor will say, there is something in that. And when you come to the borders of the grave he was there once, and you heard how he shrieked, and how frightened he was give him your hand, 
and say to him, Ah! I have a Christ that will do to die by, I have a religion that will make me sing in the night. Let him hear how you can sing, Victory, 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 through him that loved you. I tell you, we may preach fifty thousand sermons to prove the gospel, but we shall not prove it half so well as you will through singing in the night. Keep a cheerful frame, keep a happy heart, keep a contented spirit, keep you eye up, and your heart aloft, and you will prove Christianity better than all the butlers, and all the wise men that ever lived. Give them the analogy of a holy life, and then you will prove religion to them, give them the evidence of internal piety, developed externally, and you will give the best possible proof of Christianity. Try and sing songs in the night, for they are so rare, that if thou canst sing them, thou wilt honor thy God, and bless thy friends. I have been preaching all his while to the children of God, and now there is a sad turn that the subject must take, just one moment or so, and then we have done. There is a night coming, in which there will be no songs of joy a night in which no one will even attempt to lead a chorus. There is a night coming when a song shall be sung, of which misery shall be the subject, set to the music of wailing and gnashing of teeth, there is a night coming when woe, unutterable woe, shall be the matter of an awful terrific mice rear when the orchestra shall be composed of damned men, and howling fiends, and yelling demons, and mark you, I speak what I do know, and testify the scriptures. There is a night coming for a poor soul within this house tonight, and unless he repent, it will be a night wherein he will have to growl, and howl, and sigh, and cry, and moan and groan forever. Who is that, sayest thou? Thyself, my friend, if thou art godless and Christless. What, sayest thou, am I in danger of hell fire? In danger, my friend. I, more. Thou art damned already. So saith the Bible. Sayest thou, and can you leave me without telling me what I must do to be saved? Can you believe that I am in danger of perishing, and not speak to me? I trust not, I hope I shall never preach a sermon without speaking to the ungodly, for oh! How I love them! Swearer, your mouth is black with oaths now, and if you die, you must go on blaspheming throughout eternity, and be punished for it throughout eternity. But list to me, blasphemer. Dost thou repent tonight? Dost thou feel thyself to have sinned against God? Dost thou feel a desire to be saved? List thee. Thou mayest be saved, thou mayest be saved as much as any one that is now here. There is another. She has sinned against God enormously, and she blushes even now, while I mention her case. Dost thou repent of thy sin? There is hope for thee. Remember him who said, Go, and sin no more. Drunkard. But a little while ago thou wast reeling down the street, and now thou repentest. Drunkard. There is hope for thee. Well, sayest thou. What shall I do to be saved? Then again let me tell thee the old way of salvation. It is, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou art saved. We can get no further than that, do what we will, this is the sum and substance of the gospel. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and be baptized, and thou shalt be saved. So saith the scripture. Dost thou ask? What is it to believe? Am I to tell thee again? I can not tell thee, except that it is to look at Christ. Dost thou see that Savior there? He is hanging on the cross, there are his dear hands, pierced with nails, nailed to a tree, as if they were waiting for thy tardy footsteps, because thou wouldst not come. Dost thou see his dear head there? It is hanging on his breast, as if he would lean over, and kiss thy poor soul. Dost thou see his blood, gushing from his head, his hands, his feet, his side? 
it is running after thee, because he well knew that thou wouldst never run after it. Sinner. To be saved, all that thou hast to do is, to look at that man canst thou do it now. No, sayest thou, I do not believe it will save me. Ah! My poor friend, try it, and if thou dost not succeed, when thou hast tried it, I am bondsman for my lord here, take me, bind me, and I will suffer thy doom for thee. This I will venture to say. If thou castest thyself on Christ, and he desertateth thee, I will be willing to go halves with thee in all thy misery and woe. For he will never do it. Never, never, never. No sinner was ever empty sent back. Who came seeking mercy for Jesus' sake? I beseech thee, therefore, try him, and thou shalt not try him in vain, but shalt find him able to save to the uttermost them that come unto God by him. Thou shalt be saved now, and saved forever. May God give you his blessing. I cannot preach as earnestly as I could wish, but, nevertheless, may God accept these words, and send them home to some hearts this night. And may you, my dear brethren and sister, have songs in the night.